You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a new face for Greater Brockton. I have Sarah Wallachy. 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 <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up. Sorry. <laughs> Close enough. Okay. And you are from Family and Community Resources. Correct. New to the organization. It's a long time organization here. Yeah, in over 30 Champions. years. 30 years. Patricia Kelleher's the executive director. Correct. I know a few people that are involved over the years on that board, but you are having a great event coming up. We are. Tell us about it. We have a celebration of women, um, Cinco de Mayo celebration of women. So it's on May 5th. Uh, it's going to be over at the Fuller Craft Museum. We're going to be honoring three women um, as it's a celebration of women. We're really excited about it. We've got Mexican Fiesta foods, you know, margaritas, all that kind of good stuff. So it should be a good night to um, bring in some really fantastic women and celebrate them. And the three women, I know two of the three of them. I know Alan Pesovich very well. Mm -hmm. Alan is a longtime Democratic activist, yes. but she also is someone who's very committed to the Brooklyn Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. And she's been there a long, a long time. Yep, I won't a... say how long because she'll yell at me <laughs> if I do. That's right. Yeah, she's okay. the program director there now. Um, and then Chazzy Dowalibi, who was the editor over at the Enterprise, Correct. Um, and, the and she just recently, I think... She did. She just recently retired. Retired. Uh, she She's was, still consulting for them, as far as I know. Which is Gate, Gatehouse Media, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And then um, someone I didn't know, but I saw on the list, uh, attorney Susan Cantor, who's right. one of your board members. Right. She's been on our board for about three years, um, and she's a philanthropist herself, a partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers, and she's been great since she's come on the board. Um, brought in a lot of new people to connect with our organization. She's, you know, opened her home and done some dinner parties, and mm -hmm. she's really dove right in, so we're, we're happy to have her on board. Now, this is a fundraiser for the organization. Correct. The organization, you're a nonprofit, 501c3. Mm -hmm. You're the develop one of the development people. Mm -hmm. How important is it for people to support this and to help you out? It's critical. I mean, the services that we provide for the community are, you know, unmatched. And we particularly have, you know, some issues funding two programs in particular. So there are Safe House program, which is emergency shelter for women and children who are um, in a crisis related to domestic violence. So although we do have a contract with the state, um, there's never enough funding, particularly mm -hmm. for transportation, because we got to get the kids um, and the biological parents to and from the visitation centers. So that's really important. Um, and additionally, we have domestic violence counseling and advocacy for, you know, in the courts and that type of thing. And so it's really important that we can get people to you know, come in, we want to meet new people, so we're kind of calling it a fundraiser and a friend raiser. You mm -hmm. know, we want to connect with as many people as we can um, to keep those services going. It's really important for the families in the community. Now, I know that you're, you get a couple of different locations now. You've always been on Newton Street, right? right? But you branched out. Yeah, so right Right down the road on Belmont, we have a visitation center now. So that's where we hold the visitation with the biological parents and the children who have been separated for, you know, whatever reason, may it be DCF involvement, um, mm -hmm. a number of reasons. So that's been great to have that and second that's location. kind of behind near George's it's, Cafe. It is. Uh, over near where Three Perfect, Perfect something. Prince over there <laughs> and all those groups yeah, over there. That's I, right. I, I, so that, that's, a, that's a great place. And, of course, we don't talk about the location for the safe house because that is where people have to go when they're really in crisis and, and, and really in trouble. Correct. So, I mean, the organization, you must be getting a lot of support for this. How many, what's your expected attendance? Uh, we're hoping to have about 100 to 125 people here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's only a two hour event, so it's a little bit smaller. We do have a larger event coming up in October. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be more of um, a later evening gala, a little bit more formal. So we'll hope to have even more We'll have you Attendance back and you there. can promote that one as well. Sounds good. So sell it. Tell the people out in the public how they can get involved, how they can get tickets. Absolutely. I, I don't know if you have raffles or what you do at the event. We do. So uh, talk to them. Forget about <laughs> me for the moment. So we have, like I said, we have Mexican food. So we're going to do some appetizers, cocktails, Mexican champagne, margaritas, the whole nine. Uh, we'll have a short presentation of the honorees. And then we do have a silent auction, which I've been working diligently on. We have a lot of great 
auction items. We've got everything from fitness packages, personal training, to a safari to South Africa, you know, something for everybody. And, you know, we're going to wrap it up. We do have a little bit more substantial food, so we are going to have, you know, a dinner afterwards. Not a sit down, but some stations. So it should be a lot of fun. And, you know, we've got a lot of people who are really excited to come. I know I'm excited to be there. One of my first events working at the agency and you know, I'm thrilled to honor these three women and have the pleasure of meeting them for the first time. I'm on a nonprofit board too, and we were talking about a Cinco de Mayo, so I'm glad we didn't do it because yes. we, were, we could only do <laughs> one. Well, you, Cinco de Mayo, as far as I'm concerned, you need to extend that week. You have to start it like oh, on yeah. the first, and maybe go to the tenth. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's on my banned list of things I'm not supposed to have, yeah. but that's okay. Um, <laughs> we thought about getting some Mexican places to cater, and they pretty much laughed at my face, yeah, you know, Cinco busy. de Mayo, yeah, that's our the busiest. biggest time of year, but it should be a lot of fun. So do you, I don't know if you can reveal this or not, but I'll ask it anyway. Who came up with it? Who decided that they wanted Cinco de Mayo? You're uh, new. Did you come up with it? Did Pat no, come up with I it? No, I think or? it was a combination of Pat and my supervisor, Joanne Hoops, who was formerly at the Boys and Girls yes, Club, yes, and okay. now she's over with us in development. Um, I think it actually came down to one of those things that the date worked out, and mm -hmm. so that led us to the Cinco de Mayo theme and we kind of took it and ran with it. So you're still looking for supporters? You Absolutely. Know, and, and ticket. Tell them website and phone yep. number. So you can to go info. to our website fcr-ma.org and on there they have a link to um, a form that you can fill out and you can buy your tickets on there. You can just mail that into us and the, you know, the event is coming up pretty quickly. It's next Thursday. We aren't selling at the door, but you're more than welcome to call the organization. Let us know that you'd like some tickets, and we'll be happy to put you on the guest list. Okay, and uh, basically, there's a staff, a small, very dedicated staff, but there's a lot of volunteers involved with the organization. There are, and we have and a lot of opportunities. Need volunteers still? Always. We always need volunteers. Um, I mentioned before the Safe House program, and part of what we do for that is we have a you know a room called Janet's excuse me Janice's closet. So any donations of women and children's clothing or personal items that would help a family, you know, in an emergency type situation where they've fled their home and they really really don't have any resources, we're always taking donations for that. Our food pantry is very low right now too, so non-perishable items would be fantastic. And then we love people to volunteer with the events, so you know, come on for the October event and help us get ready and get the auction going and you know, you can come in and volunteer to watch the kids during the moms, support groups, all that kind of stuff. So if you're willing to uh, give us some help, we'd be happy to utilize it. Glad to have you here. We'll help you promote it, and we're, we might give people a little peek of it. We want them to go. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. So just to recap um, on Cinco de Mayo, which is May 5th, 530 to 730, Fuller Craft Museum, a celebration of women, three women being honored, Alan Pesovich, Chazzy DeWallaby, I always get it wrong, <laughs> Susan Cantor, and just help support a good cause. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.